Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Now I got another little project. Uh, this is an economy tractor that I bought. Uh, I think I bought it on eBay and had to go up in New York State to get it. It had no engine. And at the time I bought it for parts because I was working on another one. And this had pretty nice tires on it so I bought it mostly for that and I got the other one all done and decided to buy new tires for it because this one looked like it had possibilities <laughs> and it did what I wound up doing is putting a single cylinder owning diesel engine in it. They came off of one of the refrigeration units that go on the trucks. And I got that at an auction along with a Honda I think it's 11 or 13 horse that was in a fire. And a Wisconsin engine in this diesel. So I had it and uh, wanted to make use of it, so it wound up in this, which turned into quite a project. Um, I can show you a little bit about it. It uh, didn't quite fit in the frame. It lacked just the whisker, just like always. So I had to, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but right here, I had to cut just about the width of the thickness of the metal out where the engine's going to go. Because this engine was uh, in one of those refrigeration units on a truck and it has a really large oil pan. I'm not mistaken, I think it holds either four or six quarts. Anyways, <clears throat> what I did was I had to cut part of this away and then I uh, re-welded another panel on the inside so I kept the double wall. It just kind of narrows down right here. And had to make a bracket here and a bracket underneath because this engine attaches that way through the oil pan. And of course it has to set at an angle in order to match up with the transmission. And I had to make this bell housing I uh, used the original um, clutch and stuff that was on the economy. In this bell housing, I took a piece of quarter inch plate and cut it out so it would fit the, the uh, transmission side. And then I made another quarter inch plate that fit here on the engine side. And then I put uh, steel bars. I think they're like three-quarter by half inch to space it out and weld it between the two and then this is just a tin cover that wraps around it for safety reasons more more than anything and to keep dirt and stuff out and I was missing a couple parts off of this I was missing this and the air cleaner and the oil filter was missing and I went to a yard sale and in the guy's backyard he had one of these uh, truck bodies that had one of these on it using it for a shed and I was able to uh, buy the engine off of him he was just going to scrap it anyways so I bought that one, so I got some spare parts, and I also got the air cleaner and the oil filter. So that was my main objective. And let's see, let me open the hood up. And it's almost a two-hand job here. And of course I had to come up with cooling for it. 
because they had some kind of a heat exchanger on them. They didn't have a radiator. I, I didn't quite understand how it worked, but it wasn't going to be of any use. So I had to come up with a, a fan and a radiator. So I at one time saved a radiator out of a Yugo and that's what I wound up using in this and I needed a fan and I probably could have put electric one in it but I, I wanted, to, wanted to belt drive one so I wound up making these brackets and I used a spindle here off of a lawnmower deck and there's some slots in it you can move it up and down to tighten the belt and let's see what else I got a fuel tank is off of a uh, wheel horse I think it was and of course had to have gauges just just to make it look nice and I fabricated a dash and we've got uh, the glow plug section over here and we got a temperature gauge oil pressure gauge amp gauge and voltmeter and idiot lights too for oil and the alternator and light switch and ignition and I needed a place to mount the battery so that wound up here in the back of course I had to run I run double cables up to the positive side I think there's two number four copper cables that run up to the starter and had to come up with a plumbing nightmare for the exhaust and let's see the water pumps over here that's original and I put a Chevy alternator on it with a regulator built in it and let's see what else I have to do I had to cut this uh, drive shaft tube down because this all moved back from original and I think these come off a of Craftsman riding lawnmower some foot pads mm. other than fabricating the hood and all that good stuff it's pretty much original economy and the engine is I wrote the stuff on the hood I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not but it's 7.2 horsepower at 2600 rpm the pour is three and a quarter stroke is three and five eighths 30 inch 30 cubic inches compression ratio is 19 to 1 Injection nozzle pressure is 1,900 pounds, and yeah, that's most of the specs. But, but the, what the project is for this one is, it's just gravity fed now to the injection pump, and I think originally it had electric fuel pump on because it picked fuel up from the the uh, fuel tank and the trucks so I'm gonna put electric fuel pump on it it seems to run alright but sometimes it just it seems like it's starving I don't know it just seems weak I guess you'd call it so I picked up electric fuel pump and I gotta find a place to mount it and of course where it needs to be is where it's the most congested so I'm going to look around and try to find a place for it. So when I accomplish that, I'll be back. Okay, I think I picked a spot for it. And I think it's going to wind up going right here. And part of the reasoning is that this is the solenoid which actually turns it on I guess it pulls the 
uh, lever here for the fuel pump or the fuel injector pump. Um, so when this is powered on, it's running. And when you shut it off, there's no power here. So it's going to make real nice. I won't have any wiring nightmares and have to run a bunch of wires. So I think that's where she's going to go. Okay, fuel pump's mounted. I just drilled and tapped a couple of quarter inch holes in this plate. She's nice and solid. And put the ground wire underneath one screw over here. And the plus side goes over here to this solenoid. So I didn't have to do any cobbling with my wiring. So that's going to work out good. Now the next thing is to get this fuel line off the injection pump, which is right here. And that's going to go to the top side of the pump. And the fuel from the tank, and the, well, from the filter, will go down here to the inlet side. So I got to go find some goodies to, to do that. Okay, got her mounted, got the lines run. Had to take the air cleaner off so I could get in there to work, get the fuel line hooked up. Um, so I got this connection here loose because I got to make sure I got all the air out of it because these diesels don't like to have air anywhere. So I'm going to turn her on. Okay. Looks like we got fuel. Of course, I already got fuel all over everything, so... I'll get that tightened up and we'll fire her up. Okay, let's give her a try. So, key on. Glow plugs. Put the throttle about halfway. Now, uh, let's see, above 55 is 30 seconds. about 30 amps and I got about 80 pounds oil pressure. I'm going to leave the air cleaner off for a little bit just so I can see up in there and make sure there's no leaks.
detector for leaks and I don't see any, so I think I'm good to go. Put the air cleaner back on her and keep my eye on her for a couple of days just to make sure. So, if you like this one, give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. See you next time.